Hello, hello team. So let's just wait a few moments whilst people come on. Lighting's a bit shady today. I guess that's uh, the beauty of the sun moving round as we head towards the autumn. Still got the little uh, dung beetle behind me. Right then guys, so how are you? How are we? Hey Katie, lovely to see you. This crazy Saturday. Right, so just giving a few moments for people to be able to come on. And um, well, wonderful to see you guys and uh, happy Saturday. So one of the things I wanted to explore today on our little Saturday sanity surgery is who you need to be as we come into September. So um, new month, had the end of the summer and is really exploring as you're coming up to a, a new period in your kind of business quarterly period, what do you need to be? Who do you need to be? And to start off with, I think what's really helpful here is almost imagining yourself walking into a room. And so as you walk into a room, the first thing that you need to be doing is looking at your mindset. Are you gonna be walking in where you're looking forward to it? Are you walking into it whether you're dreading it? Are you walking in where actually you've got a few misgivings? What you think about the next chapter will absolutely set the context for how you then perform, how you then approach things, what you're thinking about things, how you feel about things. And as we've discussed before, what you think affects what you feel, which affects what you behave. So if you imagine you're walking into that room, so who do you need to be? Who do you need to be for this next chapter? This all has to start with initially, what are you thinking? What's your mindset? Is it a stellar mindset? Is it a really strong mindset where you're going in ready to win, ready to be powerful, ready to ensure that you are absolutely going to get every opportunity out of this next period? So that's our little mindset and exploring where are you currently? It's also then looking at how do I kind of physically feel? So if you're going to be walking through that door into the next room or into a, a new arena, um, and that can be a virtual arena if it happens to be through the door of Zoom or the door of um, Google Hangouts or whatever it is that you're using. Physically, how are you feeling? So are you sore? So as you guys saw last week, I went up Ben Nevis with uh, Krishna and Harry and some of the other guys. I was whacked out at the start of this week. My goodness, Monday was a write-off. So driving back from Bren Nevis on Sunday, because we finished the walk at like 1.30 in the morning, then tried to drive myself home and was just shattered. But the ongoing piece of that is that then it took me a few days, as literally I couldn't walk around the house. I was so sore, I think, from wearing my big clomping boots. But that was good for me to realise was that actually it's a heady reminder our body... Our body makes a difference on how we also present ourselves. So are you looking after yourself? Are you eating well? The two biggest nervous systems in our body are our brain and our gut. Yes, some are a little bit larger than others after uh, COVID. Um, so, but those are our two pieces. And so they speak to each other all the time. We're used to the idea that our brain will be telling us, oh, I'm hungry, but actually, what you feed in your gut then also feeds your brain. So coming back to that idea of the strong mentality and the strong, you know, psyche that we're going to need as we step into the next chapter is, are you preparing yourself well? Are you eating the really great foods that are going to nourish your body? Make sure that you are feeling physically strong. I've done my sit-ups this morning. Feeling quite good about that. Um, you know, I've been walking every day this week as well, however sore it was. Are you preparing yourself? Are you ensuring that physically, we've talked about the mental briefly, is yes, looking at our mentality, looking at our headspace, looking at our mindset towards how we're approaching. Now is looking at physically, what are we doing to support ourselves? Even as simple as like last night, my parents very sweetly took, um, we went out for dinner with a lovely guy who took us out for supper because he's about to go and have heart surgery. But we went to a place that had no vegetarian food. I'm allergic to meat. <laughs> 
great as an agricultural student and someone who spends so much time in Africa. But apart from that, <laughs> I'm allergic to it. But there was nothing else apart from some fish on the menu. So I had some fish. I was up through the night with stomach cramps, feeling sick, not being able to, um, morning birth, not being able to actually sleep and rest last night. So that meant actually this morning I wasn't on as good form as I should have been. I capitulated yesterday rather than just saying, yes, please, may I have some salad and chips or something? And so that again was that was me maybe not being as cognizant about what I could have done to support my body. We're then looking at our presence. So literally, what is the presence that you want to create as you walk through that door into the new arena with people? Are they people you know well? Is it going to be a very relaxed? Hello, hi, how are you? I mean, I love it when I'm chatting to the guys who I'm coaching with during the week. It's my favourite part of the week. It's because we get to know each other so well over time. Some of the guys I've been working with now for a year and a half, and those can be ladies and men, I hasten to add, that's not a, a gender differentiation. But so, you know, I love that. And actually, they're really relaxed, which was hysterical when I started working with um, one of the guys I'd actually been at uni with, believe it or not. Um, and he said, Alice, I don't mean to seem rude, but I recognise that jumper. Not this one, I hasten to add. And I said, oh, all right. And he said, um, but I haven't seen you in 20 years. And I was like, no, it's one of my ones from university. Because when we'd come up here to Scotland, where I literally came up here with less than 24 hours notice to come, I didn't bring a whole bunch of clothes. I didn't bring a wardrobe with me. I literally came up in what I was standing in, a large coat. Everything I carried, the 10 bags, was all my work kit. That was all that mattered to me. So, but that in that arena is fine to be relaxed. The flip side of that is I went to have a discussion about potentially becoming an associate with a large company in London last week, at the start of last week, and they'd all turn up suited and booted in their white shirts and everything. They said, oh, Alice, have you not got the memo? Where's your white shirt? And we had a good giggle about it and all the rest of it. But it's really interesting because I'm going to be down in London um, next week. And from that aspect is I will be suited and booted. That is just the way the city is. And I have a completely different wardrobe and doesn't change me it doesn't change my mindset it doesn't change you know but how do I prepare myself I try and make sure I run every night when I'm in the city or every morning um you know we've got a yoga studio down the road which we don't have up here in Scotland so my routine will alter to try and put me into the best mindset and put my body into the right position to then be tabbing across the city and I love it because I'm probably about two or three miles maybe from the city if I walk along the river um, but that's good. It's great exercise. And then it's just making sure that you prepare yourself for how do you want to prepare and be presented to those you're working with. Those can be your teammates. Those might be clients. Those might be future clients. They may be people that you're doing an interview with. So again, we took on our second member of staff this week, which is really exciting as well. Welcome, Rebecca, for when you bless you when you watch this is for me, that was all about just saying, make sure you come where you feel relaxed. Your leadership presence is you. It's how you turn up. It's, do you smile? Do you look grumpy? <laughs> do, you, do you just have a laugh on your face? Do you look very serene and just as if you're not interested? What's going to bring out the best in you? Because how you arrive and that energy that you arrive with, if you're exhausted, sometimes it's not easy. You know, I'm not going to pretend. Do I keep always humongous, great big thing of water with me? Because I genuinely feel that we are like little plants. And if you're starting to feel like there's a drought of energy, is water is an amazing pick you up. Because literally you're rehydrating your cells and you're rehydrating your body from the inside out so that you can perform so that you can be on your best, so that you can be energetic, because your body needs water to help you release the energy from your cells. So you've got your mindset, the headspace, where are you, before you've even gone to do step into this next chapter that we're looking at, the uncertainty that's coming, how are you approaching that uncertainty, are you going with a positive attitude, are you going with whatever happens, I'm going to win, which as you've probably gathered is absolutely 120% where I am, is because no small little virus I can't even see is going to hold me back. Nope. 
we've got sprays and masks and God only knows what else is required, but is that going to slow me down? No, because you guys are amazing and you're here. So it doesn't need to slow us down. Are we about to hit some financially turbulent periods? Yes, of course we are. It's coming. Da, da, da. The biggest, strongest businesses are built during recessions, depressions and through adversity. Because like anything, it's just like going to the gym. It's just like doing a press up. Someone has asked me to do the 25 press up challenge again this, this month, I think, for the whole mental awareness thing. The more you do it, the more you get used to stretching yourself, doing those strengthening exercises, the stronger you become. So imagine developing your business, developing yourself in this arena. It's like a gift. It's not something to shy away from. It's a gift. Somebody's giving us this opportunity to completely revise how we look at life, how we look at our teams. Who do we work well with? Who are we aligned with? So you've got that mental piece and how are you building that up? We've talked about the physical piece. How are you building that up? Are you making sure you're putting in the rest time? For the first time ever, 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 I've now started to try and make weekends off. Now, I don't really consider this as work for me. This is being able to share part of my Saturday with you. So this I don't see as work. Yes, does it support and does it naturally, you know, is it entwined with my business? Yes, it is. But it's not quite the same as sitting down and working all weekend. But that's the first time ever, because in the past, in all my roles, there's always been a lot of work stuff to do over the weekends too. So are you putting in designated rest periods to allow your body, your brain and your physical body to recharge? Have you filled your fridge and your cupboard with delicious, amazing, wonderfully healthy things to feed that gut so it's providing the best to your brain? Then are you also looking at who you're surrounding yourself with? to be that leader. So you're walking in and you have got that leadership presence that you decide how you want to be perceived by others. So it's amazing. You can almost imagine a mirror and our business is a mirror of ourselves. Your business will never grow bigger than your own personality. It will never grow bigger than your identity. So how you decide to turn up that presence that you're going to give be it whether it's virtual or in the physical domain, the presence you provide, that will be whether or not your business continues to grow. Or can somebody see you're nervous? Can somebody see you shrinking back? You know how they always say you give a task to a busy person. It's because you are already demonstrating the momentum of moving forward. When I work with the clients who sometimes, yeah, they'll have weeks where they haven't really made the progress, which was hysterical yesterday. I had one of the CEOs I worked with yesterday said, oh, Alice, I, I haven't done my homework. <laughs> Bless him. Well, good for him. He'd just taken his wife away for a weekend and gone out, you know, been able to just take a few days away. And instead, that meant that he came with a completely fresh mind. It didn't matter the fact that he hadn't done his homework. He came with the presence of wanting to make a difference. So we planned training for his staff. We looked at some of the internal conundrums they were having. And we used the, work, the time wisely, just in a slightly different manner. And so that leadership presence piece is also exploring how are you responding to your staff? This is such a nerve wracking time for some people. Furlough is coming to an end if you're in the UK. Um, we've got the end of some of the payment things for things like, for example, taking mortgage breaks coming to an end. We've got Brexit coming up in the States. You've got the um, American elections coming up. They've still got a lot of the kind of financial and the food issues in Africa. You've got all sorts. We've got the different changes in um, Israel and with the Middle East and some of those, you know, the all of these different aspects changing. But we're the same human being. So as the things around us move, what's so critical is that we create that stability for our teams, that we create that consistency and continuity for our teams, for our families and for ourselves, setting up a stellar routine, making sure that you know what you need to do. If you need extra help, go and find it. My goodness, there's no reason in this world any of you guys shouldn't have someone else to help you grow your business if you need it. Because there are lots of people now who don't have jobs. And if you're one of those people who doesn't have a job and you have done in the past, 
go and seek out an area that's of growth because the money is still there, but it's potentially moved. The resources are there, but they've potentially moved. And the manpower that you need to build into your business, that's still there. You might be part of it, but you might be ready for a move. And this is the wonderful part now as we're looking into the next quarter. It's a land of opportunity if we choose it to be. Or it can be the scariest fucking big black hole in the entire planet. <gasps> and what happens? What happens with fear? We chatted about fear the other week. We go into fight, flight or freeze. And how's that going to develop you or your business? If you're fighting, you become exhausted. If you're running with fright, how can you address what your team needs you to do? How for yourself or for your family, how can you address what you need to if you're busy shooting off in the opposite direction? And if you freeze, that can be okay for a little bit of time, a few moments, maybe a day. But my goodness, we now need to move forward. This is such an exciting period because we're now on the countdown to Christmas for those of you who are in the Gregorian calendar. Um, but we are now moving towards this period where the seasons change. That changes how we respond to things when we're talking about physical presence. We're also looking at just the idea that the economics, the global economics are currently shifting. I watched a beautiful programme. Bizarre what comes on TV in, the, in Scotland on, the, on, a, on a morning, on a Saturday morning. It was all about the tectonic plate movements and how Australia is moving up towards Asia. And I thought this was fascinating. Whereas before, it and Antarctica were two, two, literally one landmass and they were two, two pieces next door to each other. And over time, Australia has moved up towards Indonesia and Antarctica has obviously become colder and colder. And as it's moved north, um, Australasia has then become warmer and warmer and is now moving towards the tropics. Change happens. Change has been happening for millennia. If you're waiting for a day where there's not going to be any change, you might be waiting a little while. So instead, let's embrace it. Let's find the opportunities in that change. Let's work out how things can be moved forward. Even as simple as the crazy little Facebook where they've changed everything. I couldn't find anything for two days. It's like, ah, I've only just started to learn how to use it. What's coming up for you? What's coming up for you where you know there's potentially going to be a change? Is that going to be a change in your financial system? How can you then plan around it? Is it a change in your job role? Have you got new people coming on board? Is that going to mean you're going to have to change things there? Is the remuneration structure potentially going to be changing in your business? When are your quarterly returns due? So I know over the next couple of weeks, for example, quite a few of the companies I work with have got their next quarterly returns coming in. So you need to be able to explore how are you going to present those? So is who is the leader you need to be? Who is the leader you need to be for this period? What's going to bring out the best in you and what's going to bring out the best in your team? What do you need to set yourself up with in your mind? How are you going to present yourself? Who do you need to be conversing with and being able to influence and to understand, to know that you're making decisions in a resilient manner? And then also, what do you need to do over this period? What do you know are your absolute must do's? So here's a little question. OK, how we respond to change. Yes, yeah, such a needed skill we need to master as leaders. Absolutely. And my goodness, Rilasa, you are over in Nigeria and you guys are just I think you guys are coping phenomenally well with all the different bits that are coming through and fun enough there's a couple of you guys here from the from the Nigerian piece and what a fascinating time for West Africa absolutely fascinating period and I think over Africa as a whole actually some of the areas are bouncing back much quicker than some of the western nations or that's in some sectors where it might feel but yeah absolutely right is learning how we respond to change and what a brilliant piece. So from that aspect, how we respond. So who's the, who, who is the leader you need to be? Let's explore. What are your responses to? What are your responses to when somebody isn't necessarily performing to their best? Are you the empath? Are you the person that asks how they are? Are you the grisly person that just tells them off? Do you feel as if people aren't supporting you if they don't do everything on time? Or do you ask them why? Do you look and make sure, working with one guy, for example, who's got some big deadlines coming up and he hadn't dedicated, delegated out the tasks. He's like, oh, I didn't want to delegate them over the summer. Ah, 
No, you haven't given the other person the chance to choose when they do that work. The deadline isn't moving because the deadline's a big corporate deadline for them. But the guy had thought himself that he therefore wouldn't delegate the work. But that's not strong leadership. That's not giving other people an opportunity to shine. So like you say, how do you respond? So aware it's a Saturday and I'm trying to keep these shorter and sharper. But who's the leader you need to be? Like we say, mentally, how are you preparing? Physically, how are you preparing to make sure that you're at your fittest, that you're at your strongest, that you can cope? We naturally often go through a period of sickness as in the Western, you know, up in the Northern Hemisphere, people, excuse me, head towards the winter. What are you doing to prepare for that? What are you mentally doing to prepare for that? We're about to go into a period where some people are working from home, some people are not. We're about to be creating a hybrid working environment. What a fascinating period, an opportunity to really create new working practices, to create the working environments we've always wanted to have. But what is the leadership style you need to have? Is it collaborative? Is it very authoritarian? Is it a mixture of both? Are you actually being an initiator? Are you initiating some change? Or are you being more passive where you then look and go, okay, maybe I just need to look at what's going on around me. And then we'll respond to that. I've got several people I'm working with who are like, I'm not doing anything because at the moment everything changes so often. I'm just going to provide the even keel for my staff to continue working hard so we hit our targets. That's great because they're providing consistency and continuity, both their team and their customer. So it's a fascinating, fascinating arena. And I know me trying to squidge it in on a Saturday uh, afternoon is, is quite short, short and sharp. But genuinely, I'd just love to hear your thoughts. How are you preparing? How are you preparing as a leader for this period? How are you preparing to bring out the best in yourself? How are you preparing to bring out the best in your team? And do you have somebody alongside you who's going to help you with that? Because that's the bit which we've been doing over the last few weeks, which is I just love. And that's why I'm going down to London this week as well. And we're, I've got three days of going into three different businesses and uh, various meetings in between too, is people are then asking, how can I improve? Because nobody's expecting you to have all the answers. And so as we're going in, we're helping tease out what some of the issues might be coming up so that we can help preempt them. I can help them preempt them. We're developing the strategies for the next, you are, it should be basically, we're looking at February 21 now. So relatively speaking, if you haven't got a strategy for this quarter, give me a call pretty quickly because you should, <laughs> no offense, but you should already have a strategy for now. If you don't, you've got the rest of the weekend, start scribbling very quickly round about now. But alternatively, we're now looking out to, and even February is short term, but the next six months is a very tangible way of past Christmas, past the new year, into the, you know, into February time, is it enables you to be able to look at those short-term goals. And when I'm saying short-term goals, I'm in literally kind of the next six months. What do you need to do to bring your, your business through this period? And then what are you able to do into then, you know, we can cover that later as well as wanting to do into the 18 month, multiple years. So yes, that's the kind of broader strategy, but for the here and now, because that will then show you what you need to do this month. And literally last night, I did my own where I did a sanity check and I do it every month. In fact, I do it every few weeks. I literally go month by month, check week by week. What do I need to do to achieve the business goals that I want? What do I need to do to support the teams that I'm looking after? What do I need to do to make sure that I've got space to come and work with more of you guys? Is what do I have to put in place? And that's why I've brought on Rebecca this week is the first thing I realized over the last few weeks is I can't do it alone. Lovely Mia, who has also been working with me now for six months, Amazing. But between us, we can't cope with the volume. So what do we do? Do we reduce the quality of what we're supporting? Or do I take a risk and take on a second person? I've taken the risk and I'm taking on a second person. Because I know that for me, value to the people I work with is absolutely paramount. And I know that also I'm learning now post-military to look after myself better. And when I've tried to do it for six weeks now over the summer, with trying to do more myself, I haven't been able to keep up. In their case, the natural piece was to take on a new person or you reduce the workflow. Well, I don't want to reduce the workflow because I'm here to support you. So if I'm going to increase the tempo, then I increase the support. So it's things like that where you can start to see the pinch points. 
you can start to see where you might have some different pieces over the next few months. People going back to school, people with half terms, um, you know, big, say, for example, end of the financial year. Some of the guys we're working with have got financial year end this side of Christmas. You know, all of those different things cause different junctures. In fact, one of the guys I was chatting to yesterday, their end of financial year is on Monday. So it's right now. And so, of course, I was like, OK, so have you got all your invoices out? Has everything gone, et cetera, et cetera? It's always interesting seeing all those things. So let's do a little planning. What is the leader you need to be? And please drop below anything I can support you with, thoughts that you've got on how you're preparing, areas that you've got for concern. So what are areas that you think you could really help kind of, you know, develop better as we head into the next quarter? And if there's anything I can support you with, as always, I'm here. Because whether I'm here or in London, but have the magic phone, which means I can pretty much chat to you wherever you are in the world. And we're here to support. So have a wonderful, wonderful few days and speak to you soon. Look forward to hearing from you. Ciao for now.